So you want to learn how to build the ultimate bioactive leopard gecko vivarium, eh? Well, this is the video for you. Stay tuned and let's jump into it. Heads up guys, it's Mike with Alpha Reptiles, and today I'm coming at you guys with a brand new Leopard Gecko bioactive tank setup for my man, the OG Striker. If you're new to the channel and you don't know that much about me, I'm a 21 year old biology student at the University of Calgary. I make reptile related videos, put them on the internet. With that being said, why don't we get started on setting up the enclosure. Before we get into the setup of the enclosure, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what bioactive is, what bioactivity and bioactive tank mean. Bioactivity involves the use of detritivores and other small microorganisms to consume and break down the waste from your animal and change it into a plant food or basically a soil derivative. In the tank behind me we are going to be adding in springtails as well as isopods. Those are the two that are the most common in the hobby and the easiest found. So just make sure you do a little bit of research on what isopods and springtails will do best in an arid environment. Now that you guys understand a little bit more about bioactivity and what it involves, we can get started on the tank build. All right, here we are, you guys. These are all the different things that I'm going to be using in this setup. I'm not gonna go individually into each and every single item that I'm using here, but as you can see, Striker is right on the inside there. Uh, getting a little bit familiarized with these new products that are going to be in this tank. Before we get into setting up the video, there are a few key things that I'm going to want to talk to you guys about. The first of which is going to be the tank itself, the Thrive Habitat, as well as the Reptutemp Digital Thermostat. Now that you guys have a good understanding of what exactly is going to be going into his cage, why don't we get talking about those select products? Like I said at the beginning of the episode, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Thrive Habitats because they, in a way, sponsored this video. What Chris ended up doing for me was actually making this tank for free, uh, as well as he gave you guys a coupon code, as you'll see when I read this letter. I feel kind of terrible. I had this sitting in my basement for about two months or so, maybe even more, I'm not sure. When I opened the cage, I was greeted by this beautiful typed letter uh, from Chris and it made me feel kind of bad. I'm just gonna read off this letter for you guys and it kind of gives all the details about the tank and about him, so why don't we get into it. Mike, thank you for your interest in Thrive Habitat. As per your request, we made Striker a 26 by 18 by 18 PVC enclosure. Side note, that makes it about 35 to 36 gallons, complete with a T5 fixture as well as six inch flex watt heat tape. You also find in there a few extra goodies, including samples of our new line of lighting, which includes daytime basking lamps, night black heat lamps, infrared heat lamps, as well as a 5.0 and a 10.0 UVB coil bulb. We've also included a couple enclosure decorations, temperature humidity gauge, temperature gun, which is awesome, water dish, as well as the Thrive t-shirt. We've also created a special discount for you guys, the viewers. The discount code is Alpha Reptile 15, and you will save 15% off anything that you purchase on their online store from now, when this video is posted, until the end of April. The code is only valid within Canada, so for you American viewers, I'm sorry. Right now, it's just for Canada. Maybe an American one will come soon. Honestly, Chris, I thank you so much. I virtually shake your hand at the next show. I certainly will. I really appreciate it. As you guys saw, he is offering you guys, Canadians at least, a 15% discount with the coupon code ALPHAREPTILE15 at checkout and you guys will save 15% off. Now that we've talked a little bit about the Thrive Habitat, the actual enclosure that Striker is going to be going to, why don't we talk about the mechanism of heating that we're going to be using, the six inch flex watt heat tape. And what goes along with heat tape is the most important part of all, the thermostat. Let's dive into the thermostat details. When using flex watt heat tape or any unregulated heat source like a ceramic heat emitter, the use of a thermostat is critical. While they add a little bit of extra cost to the setup, they might be the difference between life and death when it comes to your reptile. What they do is regulate the temperature of the hotspot by controlling the heating device so that it turns on and turns off as needed. Recently, Exoterra and Zoomed have both released some more basic thermostats, so it is relatively affordable, not 
two three hundred dollar entry level now you can get one for as cheap as about fifty dollars not only are they used to regulate the main heating device they can also be used to mitigate the risk of burning from devices like heat pads or heat rocks that are within the enclosure of your animal so if you're worried about anything like that make sure you pick one up it's at this point now that what I do is take a seat back, stare at the tank for a while, look at the plants that I have, and just try and figure out exactly what the look I'm going for. This is a relatively tall cage for a leopard gecko, and since mine has no claws or anything, uh, he'll need some ramps and whatnot to climb. You can see the diversity of plants that we have. All of them are succulents. Um, there's a desert rose, there's some like aloe-esque plants, there's uh, hen and chicks, there's a bunch of different kinds of plants that I'm going to be using. And it's important before you get adding the substrate that you consider this and take the time to really think over and try and figure out how you can put the wood together combined with the plants to make an overall beautiful scape. There's no real science behind it, it's really just what looks good to you. So there's no need to uh, show you that part, it's just, it'll take time, it'll take many different builds for you to build a repertoire of different looks that you're going for, as well as where and how plants grow. That really just comes with experience. The first step in the setup process is going to be setting up this real rock background into the back of the cage. The couple of issues with this background is that it's really not all that flat, so siliconing it is going to be a bit of a challenge. These really aren't that expensive, so if it breaks or if I have to like really put some weights on it or something to get it to stick to the silicone, then that is totally fine. The tank is already prepped, now we just have to apply the silicone. I'm personally using Silicone 1 Clear, uh, this is going to be used because it is animal safe, it is the aquarium grade silicone. I'm applying the silicone here pretty liberally, simply because I really want this to stick with minimal weights put on top of it. Getting it into the tank is a little bit of a struggle. When I bought this I never actually measured the entrance to the tank. All I measured was the tank itself and then the background, so I'm super lucky that it just barely fits in there. The background's in there, so what we're going to do is flip it on its back and then put some weights on it. You can see here I have the weights on the tank. It comprises of substrate that I'm going to be putting in as well as some fruit fly media. Hopefully this works. I have no clue if the weight of this is gonna bend the background enough for it to actually stick, but we'll continue the video once I've got this background to stick in place. Now that we've spent some time thinking about the overall scape itself and attaching the background, what we can move on to is attaching the flex squad heat tape, which is going to be the main heat source for this tank. Something that I learned while using this is that there is no adhesive tape on the bottom like the common Exoterra or Zoomad heat pads. Instead, you really just have to use ideally aluminum foil tape, or in my case, I didn't have that, so I just used black duct tape. When you're applying the tape to the heat tape, you want to only cover the red sides of the heat tape because if not it can overheat and actually burn the tape and that can lead to bad things as we all know overall this is a very simple and easy process it was my first time and it's really pretty easy now that we're finished adding the heat mat to the bottom we can start to move on to the interior of the tank where does the interior start the substrate of course, I'm going to be using excavator clay in here. This is actually left over from a biopod build that I did. Side note, that tank didn't end up going so well, so don't use biopods for your desert animals, please, for the love of everything. But back to the main point, I'm going to be using the excavator left over from that project. I'm going to be using the whole rest of the bag in this and adding about 64 ounces of jungle mix to it. The reason for that is to reduce the red coloration in the excavator clay as well as help the excavator retain some water content. That way there's a little bit less of a possibility of it crumbling after six or eight months. Ensuring that the excavator clay has soaked up all the water and everything is now moist is critical. So make sure you go and spend your time to hit all the different excavator pieces in here. And once you're finished, you should end up with a product like this. My mix is slightly watery. I would actually like it a little bit drier, but you're gonna want to end with something along these lines. The process of adding excavator clay into your tank is somewhat of just trial and error. You can see here, I am moving rocks, I'm putting the skull, I'm taking away the skull. I'm doing a bunch of different stuff, trying to meet the needs of the animal while making it look good at the same time. It's all just a trial and error process, and if you take your time, your results will end up something like this. 
and you guys can now see what the tank looks like staged with a piece of choyo wood that is just dead cactus wood essentially but you can see the look that I was going for you can see there is a skull in the background I built it into the wall to make it look like it's been there for a while also these guys come from the Middle East and primates uh, were living over there for quite some time so it kind of makes sense the rest of the tank is all quite basic it's really nothing special but I tried to make a nice natural cave for him in the back there with some rocks leading up to it once this is set up I might try and find some more and then uh, put a bunch more in this corner right here now that we're done using the excavator clay what we're going to add now is the Arcadia earth mix arid which is a special bioactive media for uh, arid type climates let's talk a little bit about that and then get on to adding it into the tank that's right my choice for substrate in strikers tank is the arcadia earth mix arid don't get your panties in a knot i know i'm using another loose substrate but before you say anything in the comments let me explain to you why i'm using it first off i chose the substrate because it's completely natural which reduces the risk of any impaction occurring as well as uh, just ingesting things like crushed walnut shells or straight sand is probably not the best thing for your animal. Including these natural ingredients are things like volcanic ash, which is beneficial to both plant growth and the health of your animal because it's a fact that when your animal is eating loose insects off the substrate, the insects will have certain amount of earth stuck to them or they grasp it as they're going into the mouth. So your animal, even if it doesn't eat mouthfuls of the substrate, will take in some of the volcanic ash which is loaded with micronutrients for your animal. Another benefit to this is that they're actually filled with worm castings. Worm castings again are completely natural, very rich in nutrients for both your plants and again the same situation when your animal eats the insects will also have some stick to them. Not only is Arcadia Earth Mix Arid great for plant growth and for your overall animal's health, it's also loaded with organic material that is perfect for your custodians to start eating. That's beneficial because you can actually throw in your custodians before your animal goes in and they'll have enough nutrients to not only survive, but they will thrive. Moving on to adding the substrate to the tank, it's really quite self-explanatory. I didn't do anything special here, just filled up the eyes of the skull because I can. And then I moved right on to planting it. Uh, these are all succulents in here currently and I cannot wait to see how they do. The last step in the setup process is adding the thermostat as well as a temperature and humidity sensor that I was sent from a company and you can see them both right there. It's the Zoomed digital thermostat and the Ingbird temperature and humidity smart sensor. In this video the only thing that you're going to see me setting up is the Repti Temp digital thermostat because the Ingbird temperature and humidity smart sensor I'm going to actually highlight in a little short video itself so if you guys are interested you guys can go check that out. I'll hopefully have it up pretty soon after this video and uh, you guys can go check it out and hear my honest opinions about it. But instead of going on about that why don't we unbox the RepTemp and get that set. When unboxing the RepTemp, all you're greeted by is a couple simple things. You get the unit itself and a little instruction manual. Something that I found really nice about this is that the cords were very, very long. I think they're about six foot long cables for each side, so you have a lot of flexibility on where you can put it or mount the unit outside the tank. Running the cable through the cage was really easy. I have a hole in the top of the cage, so it made life with these probes extremely simple and i'm going to try and clean it up a little bit later with some more excavator so you don't see any of these black cables but for now you have a couple sitting in the tank that's fine with me if it means striker's safe other than that it was super easy to program it was a simple click of a couple buttons and we're off to the races all right everyone this is the complete tank as you can see there is leaf litter that has been added into the tank I just have some crushed oak leaves in there for right now, and I think it is looking incredible. We do have a couple loose cables as you can see right there, but honestly, I will try and clear those up with some excavator at a later time. Right now, there's only two things that are stopping me from adding striker, and that is one, the temperatures haven't gotten to where they need to be, 
And two, I haven't added the cleanup crew. So why don't we do that right now? And here's the cleanup crew that we're adding. We're going to be adding gray springtails as you can see in here. They're quite a bit larger, like three or four times the size of normal springtails or the white springtails. We'll also be adding my prized possession isopods, the zebra isopods. I recognize that there is a risk that these might be eaten, so I will be holding some back, but I wanna seed them in here and see if they actually start breeding. Another species that I'll be adding is the Trachylapis rathkai. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, these guys are a larger isopod as well, but hopefully they do well. I don't have too many of these, so I'm going to be seeding one culture, and in every single other culture that I made, they actually were infested with the white isopods. That's not good. I'm gonna need to bring these guys back from out competition. And of course, I'll also be adding in normal white springtails. These guys are hopefully going to do really well. Um, I don't want them to be outcompeted or anything, but I also don't know how they're going to fare in a more arid climate. I suppose you could say that the cleanup crew or the custodians of this tank is a little bit up in the air as of right now, but I hope to get that solved and to really discover which of these cleanup crew or uh, invertebrates do the best for this tank. It's going to be an ongoing experiment. I'm hoping to get some other species as well to test in this arid setup. So. It should be really fun. Why don't we add these guys to the tank now? First off, we're gonna start with the Trachylapis rathkai. I'm just gonna put them right up front here. We can go do their thing. Now we're going to add some of the gray springtails in here. I don't know how many exactly are in that clump that I took, but hopefully a good amount. Now on to the normal springtails. I'm just gonna add them right up front here. They're on little pieces of charcoal, so I will remove those before Striker goes in here. And last but not least, we can add the zebra isopods. I really wanna see them doing really well when I open this cage up in six or eight months and uh, see some breeding action going on. All right, you guys, and that finishes up the tank. We're done. Stryker's brand new bioactive vivarium is finished. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. If you learned something, make sure you leave it in the comment section. I really wanna hear what you guys take from these kind of videos because to me, they take a lot of time and I just like to know that you guys uh, enjoy the videos and also learn something. The point of this channel is for you guys to learn stuff as well as for me to learn new things as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you did, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section. I reply to every single one of them. If you guys are waiting for me to put Striker in this tank during this video, it's not going to happen. Uh, I will be making a moving Striker video. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. Turn on your post notifications and if you're new to the channel make sure you click that subscribe button because I make videos at least one to two times a week so uh, you get plenty of reptile frog plant and fish content as well click that subscribe button and you'll not be disappointed with that being said it wraps up the video so I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next one later